a very happy Good Friday to everybody. I wanted to address something that I think is important on Good Friday. And um, for a very long time, many of you will have known, 20 years or so, I have uh, strongly held the assertion that we spend too much time tiptoeing around the cultures that choose to join us and not enough time standing up and defending our own culture that others have chosen to join. And what I wanted to do is just talk about three examples on Good Friday that have happened in the last week or so and why actually this sort of disparaging phrase that's used, oh, the gammons are sweating again, why actually it runs much deeper than that. Because not only every time is there an insult, there is also an injury. And in the race for clicks and headlines, other people don't spend a moment to just show exactly how this is being done. So I thought I'd take three examples and we can walk our way through them. And remember, these three examples have all happened this Easter in this country that I was born in and still call my home. So the first is Easter eggs and Cadbury's rebranding them as gifting eggs, greeting eggs, whatever. The idea, of course, the packaging has changed, so they don't say Easter eggs, that makes an easy headline, there's the picture, there's the people being outraged because now you've got eggs that aren't Easter eggs. So, and, and typically on Twitter and others, you get, oh, the gammons are sweating. The suggestion that it's a kind of nationalist thing, it's a white nationalist thing, it's a sweaty English people being racist pigs thing. Um, and I should just say on the point of nationalism, you'll notice that you're allowed to be a Welsh nationalist and be proud of Wales. You'll notice you're really encouraged to be a Scottish nationalist. Uh, Nicola Sturgeon whipped the Scottish nationalists into a frenzy, so they went into some sort of physical violent campaign against anyone who wasn't. And you're allowed to be, as a proud Irish nationalist, you're not allowed to be an English nationalist. You've never been allowed to be that thing. But the inference is if you care about Easter eggs, somehow you're a far right thug and an English nationalist, something you're not allowed to be, as opposed to just recognising this is and was a Christian country. Easter eggs have been around for as long as we've known about Easter eggs. And whether you're religious or not, that's what they're called. So why are you messing with them and now calling them gifting eggs or gathering eggs or greeting eggs? I don't actually care what you're calling them next. But of course, this happens insult with injury. And the injurious thing to me is that at a time that Easter eggs are removed and pulled from stores and called something else, it's a bit like the dilution of Christmas, isn't it? Into the festive season, festive cars, a festive tree. No more Christmas, you'll notice. But anyway, is it happens at the same time as London has sufficient resources to hang Ramadan a ding dong, Ramadan lights up all over the city. So it's not just the insult, it's the injury. It's the injury. And I like lights. Put lights up for everything as far as I'm concerned. Hindu lights, marvellous. You want to put lights up for Ramadan? Frankly, I don't care. I love lights. But it's the taking away the insult then, the injury, that actually leads to a group of people like myself feeling cross that yet another thing that was part of our childhood, is so easily just vanished away, like our kind don't matter. Another example. So we just had Hamza Youssef up in Scotland, the replacement to Nicola Sturgeon. He was the walk-in replacement to Nicola Sturgeon. It was already approved and on the cards that he would be her replacement. Um, he was kind of ushered into office and ever since he's arrived he's made a series of faults and series of obvious gaffes and it doesn't look like he'll stop making those obvious gaffes anytime soon until he's forced finally out of office so he was implanted there he's the first ethnic minister of Scotland blah 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 but the point is that when he was brought in the big outrage was that the other lady running, Kate Forbes, was too Christian. She was proud of her religion. 
she wanted her religion, she wouldn't hide from her religion and she wasn't trying to force it down people's throats politically, but she was clear about her Christian faith. And that was not okay. So in the eyes of the media, in the eyes of the voters, in the eyes of, well, really, I guess media pushed this, and certainly Nicola Sturgeon and Hamza pushed this, was too much religion. Why have we got religion in politics? But ever since Hamza Yusuf has been installed, all we've had is religion. We had him sworn in on the Quran with the men around him. And now we have him with the call to prayer brought inside Butte House. And the first thing he can think of to do in a morning is to tweet out that a call to prayer has happened inside Butte House, which if you come from the same school of thought I do, you'll know about how a conquering army wants to plant its flag very much in places where its flag has not been previously. But you don't need to buy into what I think, and you don't need to buy into any of this, other than isn't it noticeable that Kate Forbes is not allowed to have a religion or be Christian or be declared too Christian, but you can't be too Muslim. You can't be Muslim enough. You get sworn in on a Quran. There are no women present. You're not pushed on the LGBT stuff because if you were honest about that, your views would not be compatible with LGBT Scotland in any which way. You have the call to prayer booming out a boot house. Religion is everything to Hamza Yusuf. So that's OK. So another example there of how you have insult and injury. And then the final example in this, and there are thousands of examples I could pull from on this Good Friday, but is our flag. So we know that at the moment our flag is being tampered with. Uh, so Nike says it's playful and tried to suggest that the desecration of our English flag was something to do with the 1960s kit, which I frankly don't believe for one moment. I absolutely think it's the bisexual flag being put in place of the St George's flag. And I'm really proud that fans are refusing to buy that kit. I think it's a very important way of showing that you will not support this kind of thing. So then you get the kind of comment, oh, the gammons are upset, the gammons are sweating because of some playful uh, little kind of tweak to a flag. I think it looks great. I think it looks colourful. The gammons are typical them, the far right English nationalist thugs. But at the same time, as we're called sweaty gammons, for asking for our flag to be left alone, because could you imagine if someone messed with the American flag? I mean, God bless America for standing up for its flag. Imagine if someone messed with a flag from other countries. Imagine if someone messed with the Pakistani flag with a bit of LGBT relief on it. How do we think that would go down? But at the same time as we're being called sweaty gammons for saying, could you please leave our flag alone? We see the Pakistani flag with the Islamic crescent flying over Westminster Cathedral during Lent. Now, I understand because I take time to read the detail that there were members of Pakistan delegation present and it is um, a known procedure when a certain delegation are present to have the flag flying. But to have that Pakistani flag with the Islamic crescent flying over Westminster Cathedral during Lent, that isn't an accident and it isn't by chance. And I guess all three of these examples that I share calmly on Good Friday are examples of why not only do you feel insult, but you feel injury as well. And whilst I would be the first to criticise myself for offering no direct solutions at this moment, and also for sounding like I've got a flu, which I have, but anyway, <laughs> I can say very um, with confidence and courage that everything I ever thought, I still think, that I apologise for nothing that I've ever said. And therefore, even though I now have something of a voice again, though I'm not allowed on any media platform, I'm not shared or supported by anyone who has a platform of a traditional setting, that I'm kept at a very long arm's length by everyone and everything that has something to lose, is that all the things I ever thought, I still think. And when people try to excuse me away, to try and make me acceptable when I turn up at stuff, and then like, oh, that was just you being controversial. No, it wasn't. 
I still think and do think all those things. And if anything, as with so many conspiracy theorists, the only thing that's happened over the period of time where I've had to be eviscerated, leave my country, lose everything, is in fact that we have been shown to be correct and there is no joy in that. But it does mean that for many of us that have been in this since the start, uh, this fight hasn't gone away. And in many senses, it's only just beginning. Um, we just had to wait for everyone else to catch up. And they slowly and surely are. But if you feel this kind of double sense of infringement on things that you care about, there's a reason for that. And the reason is that it is specifically happening, that where there is insult, there is also injury. But on a positive note, good always wins in the end. So I wish you a very happy Good Friday and a lovely Easter weekend.